Yo, yo, yo. Welcome back to another episode of Island Spot Sports. And before we get to our guest today, we have a big shout out for, for Living Sisu. Living Sisu is a platform and app that wants to give you all the tools to have success in your sport. Their main objective is to activate your lifestyle. So for active, it's for active people. Enjoy discounts at, at companies like BioSteel, 30% off, Body Logics, The Goalie Guild, all his books are discounted. Roan, Lululemon for men. 20% off online stretching programs with eccentrics, one full month free. They got super silent massage guns, 20% off those. And it's a great quality. It's way less expensive than a Theragun. And it's a great, it's great quality. So there's so many more discounts that you guys will need to just become a member to see. So they want to provide you with anything you need for success. So come join the community. I'm a part of it. A bunch of other athletes are a part of it, so it's free to join. It takes 20 seconds to have to get exclusive offers to your sport, and it's definitely worth worth it. So, do do us a huge favor and go sign up for Living Sisu's membership. It's free, 20 takes 20 seconds, so go do it, and we'll see you there. Living Sisu is a great company. We uh we know one of the co-founders, Zach Fricali. He's a great guy. He uh. He's the co-founder, and he does a lot of live streams on Instagram at uh, at Living Sisu, and with a bunch of elite athletes. And you learn a lot from like the athletes' determination, the resiliency, everything to what me made them become successful. So it's been a great experience so far. So go on. I'm gonna leave uh, the link in the description. So uh, go sign up. Yo, welcome back to another episode of On Spot Sports. I'm Jack, and today's episode we are joined by a very special guest. He's a very familiar guest, former professional hockey goaltender and current Michigan Tech University uh, goalie coach, Jamie Phillips. This is Jamie's, what, fourth time on the podcast now? So he's always uh, been a great guest to have on. So looking forward to having this chat again. So welcome back to the show, Jamie Phillips. Hey, thanks for having me on. Yeah, I think it's I think it's number four, at least three, but I'm pretty sure it's four. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's awesome to have you back on. I, we we seem to have this going for every every year now, so it's uh, it's good to get you on again, and uh, I'm looking forward to having this chat. Absolutely, yeah. It's at least at least an annual thing, but we're getting pretty close to once every six months. We gotta hop on and have a chat. Oh yeah, absolutely. But to start things off, like how, how are you doing? Like you just had a, a busy year with MTU over there. So like, how's everything with you? Pretty good. Things are busy. Um, I'm in like a, I'm getting my doctorate in physical therapy right now. So that's taking a lot of time. I'm working up at the local hospital in the uh, like outpatient rehab. I have that making sure that the goalies are doing well at tech. Um, we have two new guys coming in this year. Um, so that running, running Victorian performance is always a busy thing in the summer. We got all my athletes with both training and nutrition now, and a couple of new things on the horizon, um, especially when it comes to goalies and ho- but mainly goalies, but hockey players in terms of hip, hip health and rehab. Um, there's a few things that I can't really talk about too much right now because we haven't got the name and stuff sorted out, but, uh, just be on the lookout for some really good things. Uh, to myself, my buddy Ben Cernick, who played Division Three and U Sports, he's also uh, he's a chiropractor. And now he's back getting his master's and his PhD. And then Dr. John Snyder out of um, Active Physical Therapy in Ohio. And basically, what we're our goal is to kind of address a lot of the misinformation and a lot of the uh, I don't know if you can swear on here, but a lot of the BS that yeah, go for it. Okay, a lot of the bullshit that we see on social media when it comes to goaltending, goalie training, uh, goalie rehab, prehab, and just overall hip health because there's a lot of nonsense out there that's actually hurting goalies. And we decided that, hey, like with, you know, with our education level and, you know, what we know about the sport and the position, like we can do something that's going to help extend goalies careers and hopefully keep some kids from, you know, being injured all the time. So I'm really excited to, we've been working on that pretty hard. So I'm really excited to, when that finally gets to launch. Yeah. Is that what uh, you've been posting on your Instagram with like all the hip stuff? It was just like a little teaser, like what, cause like it's a, it's a lot with like the hips and like the different like recovery performances or 
deficiencies that it could have? Like, is that what like a teaser? A little bit. So the recovery and performance stuff, um, that's more in me collaborating with just like VIP and as someone who's very um, like evidence-based in my beliefs and very like statistical, I just, you know, I don't want people to be taken advantage, advantage of financially or whatever, because you just have people on Instagram or wherever it is that are coaches and maybe they know what they're doing, maybe they're not, but they're, they're just saying things that aren't true in order to get people's money. And that drives me crazy because I, I just don't think that's an ethical way to run a business and it's very short-sighted. So for me, a lot of those things, whether it comes from just like recovery or ice baths, saunas, I have some massage gun videos. I have a Norma Tech boot video. I have to, that's in the, somewhere in my drafts and my reels, but like just being able to address that and just to give kids, people the truth. And for me, it's just, I don't care what people end up doing as long as it's not hurting themselves. But if they know that say foam rolling doesn't actually really do anything for you, don't go and spend your money on hundred dollar, you know, foam rollers with spikes on it. But if you have a hundred dollars and you're willing to spend it, sure, go ahead. But yeah. I don't want people thinking that that's making or breaking their performance because I get a lot of questions. Of, I just get a lot of questions of, the kids just don't know. And I'm not, it's not the kid's fault. It's the people out there that are trying to take the kid's money or their parent, the, the goalie parent's money. And they say things that either are just lies or they know are just false truths. And that, that drives, that bothers me because that's not the way that I like to run my business. I'd rather, I like to just tell people the, like the way it is and what works and what doesn't keep it simple and just stop overcomplicating things. So a lot of that recovery stuff is just through myself, my own business. And then through my own business, I've kind of branched off into more mobility stuff, but that's going to tie into what we're doing um, with that group too. And I, we're, the direction we're taking in the group is still, we're still working on it, but there will be like coaching and assessments and all that stuff. But I think it's going to be more of a, um, an educational thing. And that's what I really want because there's some, there's some dumb stuff going on in the goalie world right now. And it's, it's, it's actually to the point where it's dangerous. And you as a goalie coach might see it. You're going to have kids that are 13, 14, even like 11 and 12 years old that are complaining how much their hips hurt on the ice. Yeah. That, that's not, that's not good. Mm -hmm. And it's not something that should be like, oh, well, you're a goalie. Let's just accept the fact that your hips and knees are going to hurt. Or, you know, for me, I remember growing up and it, the, 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 like the talking point was, oh yeah, you're probably going to have to have your hips and knees replaced by the time you're 40. And we just accepted that that was a necessary evil of the sport where it really doesn't need to be that. And yeah, there are going to be individual differences, but there are a lot of things that people and I'm not going to name names or name drop I I probably will end up doing that later on because it's just not safe for some people but I'm not going to do that right now just saying that there's a lot of things that people are doing and selling and making money off that are actually causing more problems than they're helping and I'm going to leave it at that so what we're going to what are what we're trying to do is to help, help kids and stop some of this misinformation and for us it's not about money it's not about you know fame or whatever it's just about like we all of us that are because we're all goalies and we see these kids and it's yeah. it hurts it hurts us to have to tell these kids like when or it just hurts us to hear like these kids that are young and they're like okay my hips hurt all the time and i can't walk and they're like 11 and 12 years old or kids that are 14 getting double hip surgeries because yeah. they play goalie like there's a lot of things that we can do to pre prevent that um, or re prevent it. I probably shouldn't say prevent, but reduce the likelihood of it. And that's yeah. the, that's the goal of this, this new thing coming out. Yeah. That, that's awesome. Cause a lot of that needs to, needs to be heard, especially like, especially like the younger goalies, they should not be dealing with like hip stuff that early. And, or no, and the biggest, yeah. And sorry, like the biggest thing. And it's like one of the biggest things. And if you're a young goalie or you're a goalie parent out there is you're, your kid should not be skating more than being a goalie skating more than four times a week until they get to like 14, 15. Yeah. 
And people are going to hear that and they're going to be like, and they're going to lose their minds because, you know, little Bobby, who their competition is, is skating every day. You got to weigh the risks. Like it's not <laughs> being a goalie is a horrible position for your body. So it's less skating every day. It just compl- it's just beating down the body, beating the hips, beating the knees. And I can guarantee that none of these kids are doing the necessary things to mediate that damage they're putting on the body. And that's our goal is to be able to fix that mediate and, prevent some of that damage that's happening yeah absolutely and you just gotta do whatever you can to do to like help reduce that risk of injury and all that and like your hips bothering you and just it, that that light needs to be shined shined on uh, on the problem on the situation yeah and like and i mean this, this podcast is just going to turn into me venting but there is a guy who has been is actually gaining quite a lot of popularity on social media and he does goalie training he does mobility he does like strength training i think I, he's newer and i'll let people kind of figure it out from there but he's saying some ridiculous things that are just straight up lies and he's saying them as if they're absolute truths and actually today i'm at the video where it's i didn't call him out and i hate this because i, I this is not what i want i'm not trying to get social media beefs but i've had people reach out to me asking like sharing his post to me and saying, is this true? And once kids, once I know kids are doing that, like, or what, once these things are brought to my attention, I see these, it bothers me because one, these things aren't true. And two, this guy's making money off of lying to kids, yeah. like lying to kids, kids that are 13, 14 years old, like that, like for me, that, that bothers me. Like, don't lie to kids. Like, yeah. You know, if you, you've, if your training program or whatever is so good, people are going to come to you and you don't have to overcomplicate or tell these things that you know aren't true just because you're trying to make money. And that, for me, that just bothers me into my core. So unfortunately, I gotta have, I'm starting to make more videos like addressing these things without calling out names because it's not fair to kids and their parents who are wasting money or doing things that are going to going to possibly cause some injuries. Yeah. You just want to do whatever you can to help help them and help everyone just stay safe, especially like with all the lies and just know know the the truth about all this because goaltending is such a hard position on the body and you don't want to do anything that that like hurts your body even more. Yeah. And I like you know what? Like I like my parents and I like we we fell into some of these traps growing up because we just didn't know and it's not like we just didn't know and we and like you know sports science even how old am I 29 even like 14 15 years ago when I when we were younger like we didn't know any of these things yeah. and sports science wasn't as developed as it you know as it is now and it's still continuing to grow and so it's when, now that I can look back I can say okay like wow, I made mistakes here. Wow. My parents spent way too much money doing these things when it really didn't matter. And I could have just focused on this, this, and this. And so I think like for me, like, I just don't want other kids to make those mistakes I did. And I don't want their parents to spend as much money on things that don't, don't matter. And I want kids, I want all kids to play goalie and enjoy it, but be safe and healthy. And so, and be able to walk when they're 30 years old or be able to go to the gym and, you know, when they retire or whatever, and be able to squat without pain or to be constantly. And, and I, you know, I'm, a, I'm a PT, like, you know, for me, I'm, my goal is to rehab patients and get them back to healthy living. And if they can keep kids off, you know, my treatment table now, then that's my goal. Like, yeah, of course, more, more injured people means more money for me. But that's not the way my brain works, and my conscious I can good conscious like do things that are co- like going to allow people to be hurt in order to make a quick buck. Yeah, it's not not worth making more money if you're not if it's not like the same the same you're getting out of it and the cut and then the your patients getting out of it as well. No, it's just it's just unethical, and I I get yeah. like you know if you're just the average you know, goalie coach and, you know, you want to do strength and conditioning, or even you have a strength and conditioning background and you're not worried about these things. And I'm not going to give someone a hard time because, you know, maybe they don't, they don't know any better, but there are some things that I see that are deliberately deliberate lies. 
and yeah. that's the big problem for me. Yeah, absolutely. How how have you seen uh sports science like grow since like these problems came up or since you were 14, 15 years ago and then going into like the sport sports science world now and like seeing everything grow from when you're a kid to now? I think probably the biggest thing that's grown the most is definitely like sports nutrition. I just when I was younger, there there wasn't the information wasn't as readily available. And I think a lot of that has to do with like social media and stuff. And I think a lot of it also comes from like CrossFit and whether people love or hate CrossFit, they've really helped shine a lot of light on high performance, like eating for high performance. So I definitely give them a lot of credit. Um, one of the crazy, like, I think it's funny is like, if you look, if you go back 10, 15 years ago, everything was this like sports specific training and this idea that you're a goalie. So you need to train in the gym, like a goalie or you're a hockey player and you need to train. And then that was like the big, the big kind of, you know, zeitgeist of the athletic population. Yeah. And for me, it seems like that kind of has grown so much that really good strength coaches are now starting to speak up and being like, Hey, like that's not the way strength training is supposed to be like here's i'll give this question to you what's the most sports specific thing you can do as a goalie work on uh being athletic or mo mobility simpler right think simple the most as a goalie summer off season what's the most specific thing that you can do to make you a better goalie explosiveness or simpler even simpler thank you overthinking it someone's yelling at their their, their car <laughs> steering wheel right now listening to this it's most nutrition most, most sports that? specific thing that you can do to be a better goalie i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna yell at myself when you tell me this i don't get it Go be a goalie. Yep. That. That's it. So for some reason, people think that in the gym, you need to be doing these like reverse BH slide board cable push out thing. No. When you're in the gym, your goal is to improve strength and athleticism. When you're on the ice, your goal is to become a better goalie. And that strength and athleticism and that power and explosiveness that you take from doing things like squats, plyometrics, lunges, push press, like either Olympic lifts or modified Olympic lifts for explosive power, that will all directly translate onto the ice. You take that and you go to the ice and you use it. And then people will be like, well, what about performance transfer and stuff? But there's so like, it's not, everyone overcomplicates things or sports specific things are flashy on Instagram because that's what people think is what's going to get them to the next level. And it's really not going to do that. The better athlete you are, the, the, the better you're going to be at your sport. It's just that simple. Now, say you're someone who has tight hips. Yes, there are exercises you can do to address hip tightness, but that is done as either an add-on or a supplement to your overall yeah. athletic training. And so, you know, people are doing stupid things like, squatting on a BOSU ball because it's sports specific. Well, no, because why, why does anyone squat? Well, mostly for strength. So if you're on a BOSU ball, can you squat as much as you normally can? No. So you're not really training for strength. Okay. We're well, training for balance. Well, there, do you, you, when you play, is there a barbell on your back? No, there's not. No. Also you play on the ice, which is a flat, even surface. So if you want to work on balance, there's, significantly better ways to do that that's one not as dangerous and just two just not as stupid and that's so i think that that's where it's, i'm hoping that sports like athletic performance is coming back to a more simplified way as there are a lot of people that are speaking out on the nonsense that's going on in the athletic training world and you know that's one of my goals too is i feel like you know, i don't care if anyone ever buys any of my programs or ever comes and works with me, I'm going to keep making this content. So maybe one person out there will see it and be like, 
maybe I should squat or maybe I should look for a new strength coach or a kid asks his coach like, Hey, why, why am I doing, why am I standing on a yoga ball? This, 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 and this, like, yeah. it's just driving me crazy. Like people, and those are things like I, I used to think that way too. Like I, I bought into that and that's because we didn't know any better and you know, and now we do. And so it's, I feel like it's not, I feel like I have a duty to, you know, to talk about some of this information and this bullshit that we see. Yeah, absolutely. I, I totally, I totally agree with you there. And now that you said like just being on the ice, being a goalie, like I had that in the back of my mind, but I was like, that's, that's too simple to, to be a, be the correct answer but it, it makes sense because like what are you you're a goalie on the ice like you're only going to get better by like of course adding the supplemental stuff but like the main thing is just being on the ice and being a better goalie and the thing is you can't you'll never be able to recreate being a goalie off the ice it doesn't matter what slide boards or what this and that you use nothing's ever going to be the same so focus on getting stronger, more powerful, more flexible off the ice, and then take advantage of the ice time you have without overdoing it. People will think, okay, well, I want to become a better goalie. I got to skate seven days a week. No, no, you need to give your body time to rest. And like people, people think too is like, well, look at the NHL, like all these guys skate so much. If you go and watch an NHL practice, the starting goalie, goes out for maybe 20 minutes in practice, goes down 50 times, and gets off. Yeah, he's earned that right because he's a very good goalie. And yeah, the backup get, the backup has to sit there and eat pucks and do all that stuff. But no, I'm not saying that young kids shouldn't go out and try, but I'm just saying that they know that their body's going to break down if they're continuously just going balls to the wall seven days a week. But for some reason, as kids, we think that we need to go balls to the wall seven days a week. No, we need to go balls to the wall with less frequency and taking advantage of the time we have on the ice, making the most of it, while then focusing on the off-ice off development and the rehab of our body and strengthening, of basically strengthening the opposite movements that we're doing on the ice. Yeah, absolutely. Is that like part of the reason that you went from Victorum Nutrition to performance just to catch like a, a little bit of everything instead of just like you're still focusing on nutrition too, but like you're focusing on like a, a wide range of things now? Yeah, and most of my clients are still nutrition based and I love that. I love the nutrition, but I have some athletes now that are more that are, that are on my strength programming or buying my single strength program books or, you know, a couple kids that are now doing the mobility before we merge into the other group that I'm part of. And yeah, one, because I just love strength training. I just saw like a good avenue that, you know, like I'm, I've been strength training kids for a long, long time. Why don't I just add this? And then, yeah, like just, I just got sick and tired of seeing stupid stuff on the internet and kids asking dumb questions. And it's not the kids questions that are dumb. It's the kids that are forwarding me very stupid posts and then yeah. ask me questions about that because I don't, I don't like, it's never, there's no thing as a dumb question. And you know what? I'm actually very happy that a lot of these kids will reach out to me or they feel like I am some person that's going to give them an honest truth because I'm just some guy on the internet. Like I, I know that, but for them to trust me to the point where they feel like Jamie, like, is this something I should be doing? Like for that, I take a lot of ownership and I feel like if I, if kids see things that way, then I have a duty to, you know, help other people out. Yeah, absolutely. And they see you like a trusted person that's going to tell you like the cold, hard facts, the whole cold, hard truth. Cause a lot of people, a lot of things, people will sugarcoat things, but you'll just say whatever is, whatever is factual. Yeah. And that's like, <laughs> I think a trap, like Trav for Oilers was posting on like, for a while he was posting about like goalies, the goaltender's height. And that was a big, like, everyone was giving their opinions and stuff. And I chipped in the mind because, sure, why not? I don't, I don't care. I don't yeah. tell, I'm tall. I'm six foot four. Like, I don't have to worry about it. That was a huge advantage for me being a goalie. But I get all these people that are like, well, no, everyone's wrong. And if you're young, like, does it doesn't matter. If you're young, if you're short, it doesn't matter. And like, yes, it absolutely does matter. Now, it doesn't. But the thing is, it does matter not in the ways that people think. Yeah. The 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 distance from a to b on the ice is still the same 
So a tall goalie or a short goalie still have to move the same distance. What changes is the amount of net that a tall goalie takes up compared to a small goalie. So, but then everyone like, then that's where everyone like loses their mind. But my goalies I have until this year were all under six feet tall. And that's not my MO. I like, to be honest, I like recruiting tall goalies because you can't teach someone how to be taller. You can teach someone yeah. everything else. But so I have to do things. I have to go out of my comfort zone to improve my coaching ability and to help them be better goaltenders. And I've had, you know, Blake's been one of the top three in the country for the last two years. And it's not because I tell him to play like a tall goalie. It's because I tell him the truth. And I say, you are too small. So, and you're not as tall as the guy across the ice. So what are you going to do? You have to be, have better hand-eye coordination, better reaction, better patience, better skating ability, and better ability to read the play. Whereas a, a taller goalie can get away with being average at those things. A small goalie cannot. They have to make up for their height difference somewhere. And so Blake's, Blake's a great kid. He likes to be told the truth. So I tell him the truth. And so they, with all my goalies, they realize that, okay, I'm not as tall. I have a disadvantage. I need to work on those things. He works on those things every day and he's the top three in the country every year. Yeah. It just, so like, just proves that. It that just, point. I'm not saying, I'm not saying it's me doing these things. It's all yeah. him, yeah. but it's the mindset. This woe is me mindset. I see if it's like small goalies and like, yeah, you dry, dry, best example, Dryden McKay, possibly the best goalie in NCAA history. And I don't know if anyone will ever be better than him. Small goalie can't get an NHL deal. Not because he's not a good goalie because he's, he's small and that, that sucks. Like, I'm not going to say that doesn't suck because he's a very good goalie. And I really enjoyed playing like watching him and coaching against him, but that's the reality of it. So stop oh, the small goalies. Like don't focus on the fact that you're small work on being better at all the other things that the big goalies don't, aren't working on because at the end of the day, like as long as you are winning games and making saves, you're going to get opportunities where height starts to be an issue is professional hockey. And that's just the truth. Like, and not even like, not even East coast or SP or anything like that. It's the NHL. NHL teams really are not going to take guys under, under six foot three. Maybe if they're six foot, they have to be very good. And, and that's, but the problem is, is with 99.999% of the people are not, not there. Yeah. So, so don't worry about that. Small goalies can absolutely dominate college hockey. So if your goal is right now, like say your goal is triple A or triple A and you want to go to junior and you want to go to college. If you're good, it doesn't matter how small you're going to be. You're going to get there because college coaches just want goalies who are going to win at college. Yeah. So you see all these small guys coming out, uh, playing college and dominating. Yeah. Once you get to college and you do well, it might be difficult for you to get an NHL deal. But don't worry about that until you're in college and doing well and you're starting to talk to teams. And instead, you have eight-year-olds thinking that they'll never play anywhere because their parents are, are too small. Their parents are both five foot five. Like, no, just go, go be a goalie. Yeah. Go be a goalie. Enjoy it. Don't worry about that stupid shit. And just if you're small and you know you're small, focus on – all the other stuff because you can't make yourself taller so just be better at everything else yeah exactly like i'm i'm 5'10 like i used to be like yeah i'm, I'm the shortest out of goalies but like it's a it's a fact but like i don't focus on that i just focus on doing what i can to get better and like every, all this other all other shorter goalies or f should do the same because you can't you can't be tall like you said you just got to do whatever you can to make up for those things that bigger goalies don't really or could be average at and don't really have to like be on the top of their game at that point yeah and i i was a horrible skater not horrible but i wasn't as good as most of the other goalies that i was up against that were playing at the level i was so what did i do all summer we just focused on edge work because bruce yeah. and i just did edge work all summer every year and it made me a average skater at the end of the day, when I retired, I was an average skater. I never got to that point, but being able to become an average skater got me to where I needed to, to be. It got me to the American League level, it got me called up to the NHL. Like it, it got those things. But if I was all, if I, my mindset was, oh, I'm six foot four, it doesn't matter, then I probably never would have got to those places because I wasn't, I wouldn't have been willing to work. But I knew that the smaller goalies were better skaters than I was. 
So I need to set myself apart from these small goalies who are quick and better skaters. So I just worked on skating and it goes both ways. And it's not just like big goalies have no responsibility or, or whatever. I mean, I was rec- we were recruiting, we were recruiting, I look at goalies to recruit and there was a guy that I really liked who was, he was like six foot six or something. Just really good playing on a, in a very good level. But when I watched his video, he just had so many things that he needed to work on. And then you, we looked at another guy who was six foot two, I think, who didn't have those problems. Then you look at like, who's going to be the bigger project. Yeah. I mean, like some guys are super tall, but if they're, they have holes and they're, you know, they're 20 years old and some of these holes haven't been addressed by their coaches yet. Like maybe, or maybe those, those holes have been addressed and they haven't been able to adjust to it. You know, maybe the, you know, maybe it's just too much, you know, too much to chew if you commit a guy like that. And so like, there's a lot that goes into it. So I think that people just oversimplify things or get very emotional and it, it sucks. It's, it sucks if you're small. Like, I, I guess yeah. I can't really relate because I'm not like that. I'm not short, but I just, I'm more, I like, as you probably can tell, I just tell people the truth of when it comes to things. And that's yeah. just, that's just the long and the short of it. Yeah. And that, that's like, that's a good thing is that you're telling the truth like it might suck to hear but like you need to hear it because i'm like i'm the same like i hate when people sugarcoat things like i just want the full out truth and it makes you a better person better goalie like whatever like sport even in just in regular just life like what like sugarcoating is not really going to do anything like i'd rather be told the, the cold hard truth but everyone's different yeah everyone's different and it is, it is what it is. And so like, you know, as someone, I, I don't, I, I tend not to like attack or go and try to go on the offense. I try to just like do my own thing, not call anyone out and just and go and go and go and, and you know, whatever that might change as I become older and angrier. But, you know, if someone doesn't like the flavor or the way that I, I go about it, then I, there's nothing I can do just know that the message is is truthful and i'm never yeah. going to try to lie to anyone for my own personal gain because i just don't it's, it's just it's unethical i'm not i have nothing i have nothing to prove for to anyone about anything because i just I just, I just don't care i just care about people not doing yeah. stupid things and getting hurt yeah absolutely and going back to uh, like your average skating like Elbow wanted me to ask two questions for you. So, uh, if you go back to when you're fir- when you were first starting your pro career, like, is there anything you would change from like style of play, mindset, nutrition, or like anything really? Nutrition, no. Nutrition was pretty dialed. Um, my mindset, yes, I would have started working with like my my mental performance coach Bob Broden. Um, I would have started working with him right away, or I would have s- sought out someone's uh, help. Um, I just didn't think I needed it. And then the biggest thing I would have done is I would have had more open communication with my goalie coach in Manitoba and the assistant GM in Manitoba because so basically, so like I, you know, I did really well my first year as an all-star in the East coast league and, and, you know, was doing okay in the American league. And the second year I was up and down. My numbers were okay. They were about the same as Comrie's and stuff, but I, I didn't, I beat myself up because I always thought that I wasn't good enough or I was, there was something I wasn't doing. And so I was constantly doing more and more and more. And it was really emotionally taxing and physically taxing. And I'm in my exit meeting. I remember the GM said, he's like, you did everything right and you earned an opportunity, but we didn't give it to you. And right there one I was pretty upset because you know you grow up your whole life you hear like oh if you you work hard you're going to earn opportunities you're going to get them but I was more upset the fact that if someone just told me that I like at some time during those two years I was with Manitoba that I was doing everything right I would have just been and like you said Jamie you're doing everything right you're you're improving you're right where you we want you to be just keep doing what you're doing it would have been just like this weight off my shoulders and I would have said, all right, I am on the right path. I don't need to beat myself up and constantly look for different things to give me some sort of edge. And we're in the, in the end, like that, that probably was one of the things that like, where I knew my, I didn't want to play anymore because I had just worn myself down so much that I would just 
burnt myself out. And so having that line of communication or, and like, especially for young kids, whether that's with your coaches, your goalie coaches or whatever, like having that line of communication is, is essential because if he had said, Hey, you, we you know, we want more out of you. We, we want you to improve this. Then all I would have done is just focus on improving that where instead I just didn't know. And it was a mystery and I beat myself up and beat myself up all just to hear that I was on the right path and I was going, I was essentially going crazy for no reason. And that sucks. But that's if I had to go back. Yeah. That just the open lines of communication would have been, would have been nice. And, you know, I can say like, well, there's the GM and they're supposed to talk. I should have gone yeah. and took the initiative as a professional and went and talked to him. And I didn't because I either I was too afraid or I didn't want to hear the truth or whatever it was. I just didn't do those things. And that's why I'm on the talking to you right now. So still playing. <laughs> Is, is that why, is that like a big tip? Like you'd give anyone else is just communication, just like make sure that you go, you have like good communication lines with your GM, with your coaching staff and just uh, so that doesn't happen to, to them. Yes, hundred percent. And it's easier said than done. And I know yeah. the stress and the anxiety of going to speak to a coach or a GM, because you might not like what they have to hear. And hopefully you get good feedback but but chances are you're probably going to get negative feedback and you know what there are some coaches and gms out there that are you know that are really scummy and they're going to tell you they're going to lie to you and you know those kind of things can play mind games and so it's not a super black and white thing but hopefully you end up in a situation where your coach is honest and your gm is honest and if you're doing well they're going to give you positive feedback and if you're not doing well they're going to give you constructive criticism in a way that is going to be able to help you build upon your skills and assets to make you better at your position. So have just not being afraid, being open and receptive to feedback is very important. And just being willing to know the truth about your game and be able to look yourself in the mirror and to address what are your weaknesses and what people think my weaknesses are. That's really important and not enough people do it. But once you start to once you start to take that leap, it will help you and help you grow as a goalie and a person. Yeah, absolutely. I I love that you uh you told everyone that because it, it really is like helpful. Like when you do like it's hard it's hard to like be that honest and open with with anyone really like especially like, when it comes to performance. But like if you want to like know how you're doing like everything like that like you have to know the truth and like if you're doing everything right if you're not doing everything right like what you have to work on yeah and you know what like no one wants to hear they're, they're not doing well or they're not yeah. good at their sport and so it's like a protective mechanism and in the back even though I was playing in the American Hockey League in the back of my brain I felt like I wasn't a good goalie and so probably one of the reasons I didn't go in was because if I had gone in and that had validated those, I said something that validated that belief, like, Hey, we don't think you're doing well or your progress isn't the way you want. It could have been, you know, really self-destructive. And by not doing those things, you, you, you know, it's like a Schrodinger's cat situation where you never know and the news is never good. It's never bad. So it's just right in the middle. And so you protect yourself that way, but definitely hindsight being what it is. I wish I had, I wish I had just banned up and stepped up and done those things. And, you know, I didn't, and that's on me and I take ownership. And I, that's why I tell it to you and whoever's listening to the podcast is so I can go out and, you know, not make mistakes. I did. Yeah, absolutely. That's what it's all about. Like at the end, just like just learning from other people's mistakes and like what they've done and just, just they're, they're wanting to help you and just have you not do the same things and just learn from what they did. Absolutely. And that's all, that's all, that's all I can do now at this point in my career is to teach and give back and to inform and to guide. It's really it. Yeah, absolutely. But going back to Victorum uh, performance, like how, how's everything going with that? Like you guys obviously took some pretty big steps recently. So like, how's everything with that? And like the, the brand growing a little bit. It has grown. It's nice. Um, new, new rebranding. I uh, made that myself pretty proud of it. <laughs> I, I like letters. it. It's clean. Th three letters, italic font, <laughs> nice and easy. Um, it, it's good. And you know what? It's it's growing and it's the first year of the rebrand. So things have been trending upwards, which is good. 
would I like them to be like a straight line upwards? Yeah, of course. But no, as, as things go, there's ebbs and flows, but it's going well. Um, response is good. Feedback is good. Social media engagement's growing. People are coming. And whether it's through my personal page or it's through VIP, I'm getting a lot of questions and a lot of, of helping, being able to help people, whether it's just through their message or they're willing to sign up and join the coaching programs and stuff. That's what, that's the goal of it. Not trying to become a a millionaire off of VIP. It would be nice. Um, But that's not the goal. The goal is because I genuinely love performance coaching, whether that's the nutrition, the training, the recovery programming, the hydration, like all those things. Like I love doing that. I love helping my athletes. So that's why I do it and things are good. And, you know, it's fun and the business is good and it's fun to do. And I, I just going to continue to build with the content and help, you know, address all that yeah. the information, disinformation needs to be addressed. VIP is going to be more of like the strength coaching nutrition part where my personal page along with the new, the new project is going to be more of the rehab hip mobility. But even through VIP, like I have, I launched a new mobility program. I haven't really like advertised it because it's been, I have a couple goalies that are in like the pilot phase because I just want to make sure that it's all tuned up and good. Yeah. And you know, if kids want mobility training, they're more than welcome to come and, and message me and sign up for that. And even if they message me now, like for the next little while, I'm just going to have it all in the pilot pricing, which is basically maybe like 66 or some percent off or whatever. Like just, it's not about making money. It's about making sure the program's good. Yeah, exactly. And like, you've had like so- social media engagement, like you said, has been taken to a new level. Like, did you learn anything from like just reading stuff on it for social media? Or were you just like, I'm going to up my game? Uh, well, you know what? Tra- like, Trav, four oilers, and I are, are, are buddies. And I know some people like, hey, like him or hate him. He's a good guy. And yeah, like, there's the yeah. social media Trav, and then there's the real Trav. And he just messaged me and he, just told it to me straight. He's like, dude, your content is informational and it's shit. No one's paying attention to it. This is what you need to do. And so he just gave me tips and he's like, Hey, watch these guys on YouTube, read these things. If you have questions, ask me. He's like, right now, like, he's like, you're too smart and you're too, you know, you, you played at too high of a level to have shit content. Yeah. And you know what? He was brutally honest with me. And I said, all right, man, like, tell me what you think I should do and I'll go do it. And at first I was like, uh, because I'm, I'm not, I don't really enjoy filming myself and that kind of stuff, but he's like, Hey man, like people need to hear it from the horse's mouth. They need to hear it from you. So I've started to film myself, started to do these things. That's out of my comfort zone, although I am enjoying it and he's right. And content's gone up and social engagement's gone up and that's what matters. And the thing is, is I was willing to listen to someone tell me what I was doing and what I was putting all my time and effort into a shit and change it. And it's like that, like going back to anything when it comes to goaltending is just being open to feedback. And there's not enough honest feedback, too much, too much dog shit out there. Ugh, drives me nuts. Yeah. And you're, uh, you're always brutally honest with people and Trav's, Trav stepped up to the plate and did the same thing to you and look at where uh, you took it and everything went up and engagement has been a lot better since then. Yeah. And I'm, I'm brutally honest with Trav and, you know, I'm fortunate enough where Trav will reach out to me when he has questions and you know, that, that it, it's a give and take too, where I can provide Trav for information and he can provide a little bit of eyes through his platform and, you know, Trav was fat. So we worked on getting him not as fat or like travel message me like at least once a week with some sort of nutrition question and I'll help him answer it or mobility question or, or strength training. He's got strength coaches too. And sometimes he just wants to hear a second opinion. And that's, that's okay. And maybe my, what I think is the same as his coach, or maybe what he thinks is different. And then it creates a discussion and all in in the end, it's not me against his coach. It's us working together and finding a solution that's best for him. And so I'm really honest with him. He's really honest with me because he's better at social media than I am. And I, and so there you go. It's a give and take. Yeah, that, yeah, that makes, that makes perfect sense. And I know we only have a little bit of time, so I'm, I have like two more questions for you, but like, how's, uh, how's like all the guests that you've been or the, your clients for the Victorum uh, performance and just like, you've seen growth from them, especially like Blake, like Wellesley was in the AHL for a lot of this year, just like all these other athletes that you're with, like how, how cool is it just seeing them be successful and just continue to grow and develop? I love it. And you know what, the ones that I post about consistently are the athletes that are okay with me posting about it 
And I have a bunch that either I choose not to, to promote or they're like, Hey, can you just kind of keep it on the DL? I'm really low key. And I, and I respect that decision, of course. And I love it. So I had a guy, I had one of my clients message, message me and he's, you know, he's lost like, it's like 10 or 12 pounds. We started working together and I just get a text that's he's like so fired up, so excited. And for me, I'm like, that's, that's all I want. Like I, I love to see, athletes have success and I love to see them get where they want to be. And then, you know, sometimes I have athletes who are having bad dates and, yeah. you know, their progress is slow and they're, they're frustrated. And so it's my job to, to figure out what's going on to address the underlying things. And maybe it's because, you know, something happened in the family and, and they're not feeling up to exercising as much. And so it's for me, it's just to find ways to encourage and motivate and just be there for the athletes and get, and, you know, just help them overall. So, things are going well for the athletes and that's what matters. And, and that's why they're, you know, they trust me and I feel very fortunate that they're yeah. putting their trust in me. Yeah. And it's just like, it's awesome. Like when you get a text that someone's fired off and you're like, let's go. Like, I'm, yeah, like, we're, we're both in this together and like, we're both seeing success. Like that's, that's all that matters. And just like, especially like if they have goals and you're working, working to help them get there, like there's nothing better than that. There really isn't. And, and that's why I love, that's why I love what I do. And I'm fortunate that if I didn't have that, I'd be pretty frustrated because, you know, there's only so many, and you, you know, when you work in the hospital, you see some people that are in very, very bad shape and yeah. people that are dying and you hear, you know, you, you know, PT. So I get someone, someone up and I, you know, I have to roll them over in their bed and do whatever. And you hear the next day they, they've died and that sucks. And if I just had that all day, like it, it'd be pretty hard to be honest. So instead I have something to look forward to and I have, I can watch, you know, Wellesley's with Chicago right now and stuff. Like I can watch him or like DK, like I can watch them play against each other online. And it gives me something to look forward to instead of just like being around people that are like really sick and, and dying all the time. That, that, like that part of, of life sucks. So as long as there's something that I enjoy that I can work towards that gives me motivation and like energy every day, like I, I need that avenue. Yeah, exactly. If you're having if you're having fun, you love what you do. Keep doing it because you'd rather do that than something you hate. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So then, my final question for you is like, what, what was your elbow asked this question? He he wanted to ask this last time, but we didn't we didn't hit on it. So, what was your mentality like going into junior hockey, and how did that change as you grad graduate into college and then into pro? It's weird. So it was definitely a roller coaster. So coming out of like triple A, just being drafted to the O, I thought I was the shit. I thought I was, this is going to be an easy ride. And then my first year as a 16 year old playing junior B, I think I started four games, maybe seven, like, n like nothing, like horrible, horrible for development, horrible decision on me. The, the, I made, I shouldn't have ended up playing where I did. And those, you just live and learn. Then I ended up getting opportunities and things went well um went well enough where we want like I was able fortunate to be on a good team contribute play like 40 games although I didn't start in the playoffs we ended up winning a like RBC cup or I think they call it they don't call it the RBC cup anymore anymore centennial I think they call it the centennial cup now and they went back to the old name but won one of those which is huge and able to go out to BC get a scholarship you know but then be traded and have to go to the OJ and then get drafted to the NHL so like going to college I thought it was going to be like all right I just got drafted it was like it was, I look, actually, now I'm saying it, it's literally the exact same thing that was happening in AAA to junior. And I just made that connection right now where I thought that I was the shit because I was just drafted and I played behind Phoenix and I didn't like, I didn't play at three starts my first year, 10 starts my second year. So I thought that was it. And so then Phoenix signs and then I played all of every game except for one my last two years end up going and signing pro. Like, so it's just like this roller coaster. And fortunately, I, I don't know how, I think I just had a really good support system with guys like Bouge and like Albo and yeah. my parents and my agent, like all of them that just kept me, kept me even keeled through it all, even though there were times where I was, they will say I was not even keeled and I can definitely attest that I was not. Um, you just kind of find a way and it's just what I wanted. Like, I just knew that something I wanted. I knew that I was, I enjoyed it. So I was going to do whatever it took, whether things were good or things were bad. And fortunately it worked out the way they did yeah that's uh 
it's it's a roller coaster of a position for sure and like there's highs there's lows there's everywhere in between you just gotta stay even keeled throughout all those you know it's sometimes super hard to but once you stay even keeled like that's when you like performance like increases because you're not getting too high too low or thinking that you're the shit or whatever and just you're able to just stay that straight line and just continue to develop and grow yeah and it's okay to think you're the shit as long as when things go south you still think that you're the shit but not in a cocky way in a confident way as hey i am still the shit i am still a good goalie even though i'm not playing right now i'm gonna work my ass off and practice and i'm gonna get better because when that opportunity comes and i get in that game i am the shit and i'm gonna take that number one job yeah whereas if someone has the mindset, I am the shit, why am I not playing? You know, the coach hates me. But, and then that, that negative mindset is very deteriorating. So it's okay to think you're the shit. Just don't be cocky about it. Be confident in yourself. Yeah, and every, everyone always says ride that line of cockiness and, co- and confidence because mm-hmm. you don't want to go – you don't want to be cocky, and, but you also want to be confident. Just, like, have that have that, like – that line that before like being too cocky or being too confident that's it's going to affect your performance i agree 300 percent. yeah but uh philly thank you so much for coming on the show i really appreciate your time and i look forward to uh, our fifth chat whenever that is and it's uh i'm looking forward to to continue watching the way uh like the different programs that you're coming out and the, the work that you're doing so so keep it up philly Thanks, Jack. I appreciate it. I enjoy being on. Looking forward to episode number five. Oh, yeah, absolutely. All right. I'll see you later. Take care. You too.